Good everyone, my name is Graphics. Today we want to solve more examples on non-flow energy equation, right? We will be analyzing this problem and the problem goes like this. It says, a body has an internal energy of 20 kJ per kilogram and a velocity of 1 to 5 meter per second at a height of 70 meter above ground. The body has a mass of 10 kg. The local acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second square. Determine the kinetic potential and the total energies of the body relative to the ground. Now, this kind of question, what you first of all do, solution, is that you write out your parameters to make things easier for you. It says the mass, the body has an internal energy. The internal energy is a form of energy, right? And the symbol for it is giving us U, right? And that is giving us what? 20 kilojoule per what? Kilogram. Now, because you are seeing kilojoule per kilogram, this is the intensive form, so we are using a small u, not a big u, right? So a small u is better. Is that good now? Because of what? Kilojoule per kilogram, it is intensive property, that is per unit mass. Now, so we are using a small u here. So, and the velocity, we are using our c as velocity, so we will not mistake it with what? Volume. It's giving us what? 125 meter per second at a height the datum we're using z we are not using h here because we use our age as enthalpy so z should be our height and that will give us what 70 meter right so from here above the ground so the body has a mass of 10 gram so our mass here is what 10 gram 10 kilogram the mass given as what 10 kilogram right now it says we should determine the kinetic energy also kinetic energy is also a form of energy right and we should look for it we should look for also the potential energy is also a form of energy and we should look for the total energies of the body the total energy of the body is our stored energy the total energy stored now we're using e to symbolize it now we're looking for that right so what you do here is this we'll move forward after writing all these things that we want to write we'll move forward and we're going to say recall recall that um so, for kinetic energy, recall, we know that our kinetic energy is defined as the energy that is possessed by a body due to virtue of its position, right? So, I will say that it is a stored energy also because it can be stored within the system. That is why it's also the property of a system also. And it's giving us what? M as in an half n c square where c is giving us our velocity z is giving us our height you need to write all this down so that anywhere in the world they will know what you're trying to talk about our small m is giving us what our mass right and u here is giving us what our internal energy energy z in meters right so now let's move forward so from here with what we have here we have mc square that means we will say this is ending by writing mc square over 2 that's the same thing here so what is the mass the mass is giving us 10 kilogram right multiplied by the velocity is giving us one two five square is that the key all divided by what 
divided by 2. Now the key word is, I am going to multiply this 2 here by what? By 1000. Why? Because my velocity is in meter per second. So for it to conform with the rest that is in kilo, I need to make my velocity to, I would need to divide it by what? 1000. That's why I'm having this. Now from here, we move forward. So you're moving forward. If you type this in your calculator, 125 square, 125 square will give us 15,625 times 10 will give us 156,250 all over what? 2,000. Is that again? So that's going to give us 78.12. Or one three, we have kilojoule, right? Now we move for the next one. We are told to look for the potential energy. Now we know the potential energy. The potential energy. Now we are looking for the potential energy, right? So for potential energy, recall that my potential energy PE is equals to what mgz right so we know very well that the potential energy is the energy possessed by a body due to its position why the kinetic energy is the energy possessed by a body due to its motion so the kinetic is the energy possessed by a body due to its motion the potential energy is the energy possessed by a body due to virtue of its position so now and the formula is given as what mgz where g is gravity right so in this place one of the parameter i did not include is what is the gravity because it's telling us that what the local acceleration due to gravity is 9.81 meter per second so i will just add it in g is equals to what 9.81 meter per second square we know our g is acceleration due to gravity so we move forward so from here, I will say that my mass is 10 kilogram. My gravity is 9.81. Then the Z is what? 70, which is the height. Everything divided by what? I will use 1000. Why am I using 1000? Because my acceleration, my acceleration due to gravity is in meter per second square. So I have to divide by 1000 so that it can conform with the rest. Is that the key? So in doing that, 10 times 9.81 times 70 will give us 6,867. We have 6,867 all over 1000. All over 1000. And this will give us... 6.87 6.87 kilojoule this is what we have here as our potential energy now the next thing we are told to calculate here is the E which is stands for what? the stored energy or you call it the total energy of the body recall the stored energy E right is giving us the potential energy plus the kinetic energy plus the internal energy right now we already calculated for our potential energy and given as what six point six point eight seven right plus kinetic energy is given us seventy eight point one three Plus the internal energy. Now, internal energy, you given in our question here, is given to be 20 kilojoule per kilogram. Watch. This will be our sidewalk here. You know that the internal energy, U, small u, is given as what? 20 kilojoule per what? Kilogram. It means that this is intensive, like I said earlier. So if I want to put that very well, 
will not know that um, my small u, right, is the intensive property. So recall, we know intensive property is equal to what? Extensive property over mass. That's why we're having this kilojoule, kilojoule, and this what? Kilogram. That we're having kilojoule per what? Per kilogram. Because the extensive over the mass. Yeah, we call it per unit mass. So from here, I can easily say my big U hmm, is equal to what? Small U times M. Big U is equal to if I cross multiply. So in this case, my small U is 20. My M is what? 10. So we say that it is 200 kilojoule because all our value are in kilojoule. So I'm making this to become kilojoule. So my U here, the big U, because of what 200 kilojoules. So whenever you see just kilojoule, it means it's what extensive, right? When you see kilojoule per kilogram, we know it is what intensive. So I'm going to put the 200 here, right? That's how my 200 comes about. So if I should add all this value, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to have, um, 284.9. That will be me. 284.997 approximately we say that the e is what 285 kilojoule so that will be my what my total stored energy right so if you found this video interesting don't forget to click on the subscribe button and don't forget to like our next example here will be now the next one, it says, a closed system undergoes a process in which 240 kilojoule of heat is added while its stored energy increases from 50 kilojoule to 120 kilojoule. The system is returned to its initial state by means of a process in which 120 kilojoule of work is done on the system. Determine the net work transfer. So what you simply do here, like I said, solution. Right? Now the solution here, the next thing will be your data or your parameters. You said a slow a closed system is a closed system, so it's a non-flow energy equation, non-flow process. Because a closed system is non-flow. Because we say a closed system is a system that it is only um energy that allows to flow across the boundary so now a process is when a system changes from one state to another so he said a closed system undergoes a process that means let's say a process in which heat is added while its stored energy increases so if i put it heat using q12 is added that means process one to two is positive because heat input to a system is positive so i'm going to put 200 and what 40 kilojoule if stored energy increases the symbol for stored energy is given as what e so i use e1 it increases from what 50 kilojoule to e2 that is what 120 kilojoule right so we move forward now it's now returned. Initially, this is process one to two, right? Then the next one will now be process two to one. Process two to one is returned. So it says the system is returned to initial state by means of a process in which one twenty kilojoule of work is done. So we say that instead of W one two, it now be what W two one, right? So it's returned. Now, equals to 120 kilojoule. So the work is done on the system. That is the work input. So it's positive. Now, determine the net work transfer. So it's look for what? Our net work transfer which is giving us W net. And W net is what we're looking for, right? So what you do is, you apply your non flow energy equation by putting it this way. Recall 
recall our non flow energy equation is giving us the summation of the heat transfer plus the summation of the work is equals to what change in what stored energy right so from here the q12 we have for process 1 to 2 we have q12 plus w12 right is equals to u2 and e2 minus what e1 right now it's impossible for you to have q12 and have w21 the process must be reversible in this case it is reversible but when you have q12 and w21 it doesn't work that way so it means that in this case we don't have um, w12 right so we're calculating for w12 also automatically so i will just put it since we have w21 it means that w12 is unknown right so from here what i will do is this my q12 is giving us 240 plus we don't know what w12 is equals to e2 is 120 minus e1 is 50 better still i'll put stored energy as t2 is 120 minus stored energy as t1 is 50 so from here i'll put it this way by saying if i put it this way 240 plus w12 work transfer 120 minus 50 is what 70 now if i take this to this side i'm going to have 240 minus 70 right is equals to what 240 minus 70 is equals to what minus w12 or better still i can take w12 to this side any of them so 240 minus 70 will give us um 240 minus 70 to give us 170 so we have what 170 is equals to minus equals to minus w12 so if i take this it means therefore my work transfer between process 1 to 2 is equals to negative 170 kilojoule that is my work transfer now we are not told to look for the net work transfer so I will just put it this way and I will say that net work transfer right transfer it means my W net is equals to the total summation of all the net the work transfer there and that will be work transfer between process one to two plus work transfer between process 2 to 1 now we have 1 to 2 is minus 170 plus w2 to 1 is given here to be 120 so we have here to be 120 and this will give us minus 50 kilojoule so the network transfer here is what minus 50 kilojoule so if you found this video helpful please don't forget to click on the subscribe button thanks for watching